Dame Tikilis Moments audience, thank you so much for joining us for yet another enlivening session here at the Meticulous Moments podcast, where we facilitate community upliftment through leadership development. And today we have the wonderful privilege to spend time with the amazing Lee Burgess. I hope I say your name correctly, Lee. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. And, you know, we've talked on Messenger. And I met you through our, yep. our friend, John Varnas, my homie. Shout out to John. So uh, would you like yep. to just introduce yourself to the audience? Tell us more about you. Sure. My name's Lee Burgess. I'm a, a lifelong martial artist. I've been doing martial arts for 43 years now. Um, and I hold various ranks in various systems of martial arts. And... Um, uh, I have also served in uh, two countries' militaries, okay. uh, in the British Army and the United States Marine Corps. I saw your your bio, and I mean, it's a mile long. And, you know, I saw Muay Thai <laughs> there. I saw MMA there. Yep. I saw kickboxing. I saw uh, you were a bouncer. Yep. Tell us about that, uh, because you started yep. martial arts when you were six. So tell us some more, uh, more about that yep. journey. Absolutely. Um, I was very small when I was younger, and uh, I had a lot of big brothers that liked to pick on me. And uh, so I started karate to defend myself, and uh, and I was a big fan of back then in the seventies, the Bruce Lee movies. And um, uh, so you know, I I joined our, my local karate club that was in a sports center, and. Um, my mom thought it was just a phase. <laughs> she thought it was something I was going to want to give up after a little while. And uh, I just stuck with it. Um, and as I've been involved in martial arts and karate for over 40 years now. Wow. Fantastic. I mean, I saw that you went into Shoran Ru Karate, which is interesting because Shoran yep. Ru Shoran Khan is my style. And then you migrated. I know oh. you wanted to do jiu-jitsu at some point, and then you went on to judo because yep. there was no dojo there. Uh, how did that yeah. help you in that, uh, you know, in that development phase of that area of martial arts? Because martial arts is so wide. It's so broad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, back when the uh, UFC started in uh, the early 90s um, and the success of the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu family. Yeah. Um, I, uh, myself and a bunch of us karate black belts back then uh, and strikers, uh, stand-up guys, uh, we all looked at each other and said, we got to go and learn some of this grappling stuff. It's going to pay off in, in the future. And uh, um, I'm from the Tampa Bay. Well, I live now in the Tampa Bay area uh, in Florida, and there wasn't any jiu-jitsu schools in my hometown at that time. So... Um, the next best thing was definitely uh, Kodokan Judo uh, because it incorporated not only the throwing techniques, but also a lot of uh, ground techniques that you saw in jiu-jitsu. Um, so uh, a lot of us went out and became judo black belts. And, uh, um, and then later, as more and more jiu-jitsu schools opened up, uh, I transitioned into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Fantastic. Yes, absolutely. I, I watch the Gracie's uh, videos a lot on YouTube. And what I find interesting yeah. about their approach and what I love about their approach is, and I think that's very useful in a fight, if you ever get into a real fight on the street, is yeah. they, they teach yep. the students not to use too much of their own energy, but to let the, yep. let's say, the attacker do most of the energetic work and, you know, to tire that person out and then kind of just to then get them into a, either a, 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 a arm bar or, a, or a, you know, a lock of some sort of rear neck a strangle, yeah. but not to use too much of your own energy uh, in the process. And yeah. what I loved about the video was he said, you know, you can just tire the person out and then settle it there and everybody can just walk yep. away without anyone being hurt. I love that. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Well, originally, uh, jujitsu was developed for um, smaller people against bigger attackers. Yeah. Um, so 
it, it's a system that's based around not using strength. Mm -hmm. uh, like wrestling relies on strength. Um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uses, as you said, using your opponent's energy, using your, your opponent's momentum against them. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely effective uh, for smaller people. Uh, to me, all women should go out there and learn jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah. And a lot of fights on the street end up on the ground. So uh, it's important to know how to fight on the ground as well as standing up. Yeah, that's the truth. Uh, you know, that's why we need to learn the forward rolls, forward roll to standing, yep. the side falls. We need to know how to do these things because in the dojo, we have the lovely mats. But on the street, yep. you have the tar or you have the cement. And if you don't know how to That's right. it, break something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Break falls and, and learn how to fall correctly is very, very important. Yep. Yeah. And the takedowns. And you, you're right. Many of the fights that I've seen, you know, I, I like to surf YouTube. I love to see the trainings that the people do. I love to watch UFC and MMA. And uh, it's a strength yep. if you can fight standing up and you can fight on the ground. Because sometimes we have wonderful UFC yeah. fighters, but they're only good, you know, when they're boxing, when they're standing. They really don't know a lot of mat work. And yeah. sometimes you have those that are uh, very fluent in the mat work, but they're not very good boxers. So it's good to have they're these not good all, round, all rounder fighters that can really fight on any level. Because what do you do when you're not successful in the one level? You switch levels. I've yeah. seen that with Drikas still knocked to Plessis now, the South African that's yep. climbing the ranks. And what does he do? He changes levels the whole time. And that's how he gets his opponents yeah. done. And that's how he wins. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think MMA now has definitely become more, uh, it started off as style against style. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why. You had, you know, the karate guys and uh, going up against the the wrestlers and the boxers going up against the jiu-jitsu guys. And now it's definitely changed to the overall athlete and who is most well-rounded. And uh, uh, you got somebody like Conor McGregor that's yeah. got great stand-up yeah. fighting but isn't very well-versed on the ground. So um, when he fought against uh, Khabib and... Some of the other good wrestlers and grapplers, uh, he didn't fare too well. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking now as we're talking, Loyoto Machida, uh, he he actually took karate into the UFC. And he, he, I don't know if you remember, he had yep. that. It's almost like a Maigiri, but he used to take the yep. Maigiri up and then kick his opponents on the chin. And he, they would just be lights out. I mean, that was his own Absolutely, variation. Yep of that kick that was just amazing yeah. to see yeah <laughs> Ab yep absolutely a lot of the uh old ufc guys actually came you know had karate backgrounds george st pierre for example he started off as a karate stylist uh that also uh wrestled in school and uh and then went on to learn jujitsu and muay thai and uh some of the other stuff so uh he become very well 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 rounded and uh but yeah he originally started in karate as well. So so you that's that's the truth and I follow these people because you know what I love about them is they always come out with something new. They go back to the yeah. drawing board, they work out these new moves, and it's just amazing yep. to see that it's actually possible to take someone down like that without them even knowing that yeah. it's coming. Now you've got Yep. such a diverse background. You've got multiple black belts in lots of styles. And I want to ask you about yep. the styles. Let's start with, for instance, Charan Ru. What did you enjoy most yep. about that style? And then we'll kind of move on to the other list. Because the list is long, guys. You should see <laughs> Lee's list <laughs> is very long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I always loved the traditional martial arts. Um, because uh, it keeps the, the the traditions alive that have yeah. gone on through uh, through um, years and years and generations and generations, um, and that's what I teach my students about kata. You get mm -hmm. some students that hate kata; they find it very boring. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the kata that we teach have been around for generations and generations, 
And, you know, I, as I tell them, it's my job as their sensei to continue mm -hmm. on those traditions and, and, and so that these kata are around for generations to come. Um, I was never a big kata guy. My instructor would call me and say, come on, I've got to teach you your next kata for your next rank. And I'd be like, <laughs> I just want to spar. I just like <laughs> punching people. But as I've gotten older and I've realized that kata is a very important part of karate training. So, uh, and I enjoy it more as I'm older and uh, I have some injuries. So uh, through my many years of fighting that, you know, um, kata actually definitely helps me. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. And what I love yep. about the, the kata is we do the moves when we just start out. And, you know, it's yep. it's a whole new world because you have to move your hands and your arms. Everything has to move together. And, you know, yes. um, it, it's, it's wonderful when the kata world opens, when you're moving to the bunkai, and you learn yep. what that move is actually for. What, Am I breaking an arm? What that technique is, yeah. Am I breaking a neck? And when when that yeah. starts <laughs> connect, that's so when you do the kata, then you're like, oh, this is what I'm actually doing. I love to do the bunkai with the kata yeah. because then I understand it. Yes, yes. I, I, I do that with my students a lot. I I'll show them the kata, uh, teach them the kata, and they'll say, I don't really care for this and then once i show them the bunkai and i said this is what you're doing in the kata and they get it. it it then registers with them oh okay so this is how i apply it to a fight or a self-defense situation um I, mma one thing mma uh, as, uh lacks is the tradition mm -hmm. so when i get my mma guys come to my gym or my dojo and you know they'll see uh, my karate people practicing their kata or, or anything. They'll make a comment like, well, that'll never work. And I'll say to them, we use, uh, we use knees and elbows and things like that in MMA, right? Yeah. Okay, well, th that's a part of your kata, the part of the kata. So, uh, you know, but MMA lacks that tradition that uh, a lot of the respect that traditional martial arts has. It does, it does. And following the tradition and really keeping that alive. That's why I started my MAM group, the Meticulous Martial Arts Mastermind, because that's what we do. We keep the tradition alive. We yep. talk about the various styles. Absolutely. What is the meaning? What is the history? Uh we, we we teach, you know, in the in the dojo, for instance, we teach to count in Japanese, we teach the Japanese yep. names of the strikes, or you know, yep. of the kicks. Uh, toyo, kamade, yep. all of that, uh, soto uki, uchi uki, agi uki, we, we teach that because that keeps the tradition alive so that we don't forget where it all comes yes. from. And uh, yes. tournament karate, I would say, because you know, Lee, tournament karate is here for Kumite. That'll never work on yep. the street. But street karate would be here. I mean, you always have to uh, keep yep. your hand up, keep yourself protected. Correct, yep. But the moves that we have in the kata, like you said, those will all work out there. You just need to know yeah. how to apply them. Now, you've done how to apply the technique. Muay Thai as well. I've never done Muay Thai. Yep. Tell us about what's, what does Muay Thai involve. I know it's low kicks and it's a lot of elbows. Tell us more about that. Yep. So Muay Thai is the art of eight limbs, uh, two hands, two feet, two knees, two elbows. Um, and it, it incorporates all those techniques and the, uh, knee strikes and elbow strikes, uh, are really, really good techniques for in close fighting, uh, yeah. from what we call a Muay Thai clinch, for example. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's a, the national sport of Thailand. And, um, I was lucky enough to train under my instructor, uh, who was five time world Muay Thai champion. Uh, okay. Master Putpat Wauru, and um, uh, he, uh, I trained in New York with him for several years, and um, I transferred from uh, American rules kickboxing, which was mostly just uh, kicks and punches, basically, mm -hmm. um, and then I switched to Muay Thai uh, and started incorporating, yes, like you said, the low kicks, 
yeah. which you see many of those in the UFC today. Um, and in mixed martial arts, you see a lot of kicks to the legs. Um, so you you know it's incorporating all your limbs, knees, elbows, uh, punching, kicking. Um, so and it has a rich tradition in Thailand. And again, it, it's very very. They they have uh, a lot of ceremonies and mm -hmm. ritual dances that they'll do uh, before a uh, before a Thai fight. Oh, um, I didn't know that. And, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called the White Crew, and it's a a, a a traditional dance that uh, Muay Thai fighters will perform uh, when they enter the ring before before the start of the first round. Fantastic, fantastic. I guess Muay Thai yeah. is very good for body condition. Because I mean, yes. those kicks must must uh, you know really condition your body, harden your bones. So I think that's yes. very very valuable training. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. You do a lot of shin conditioning. Yeah. Um, uh, because a lot of the kicks you're using the shin, unlike traditional martial arts, karate, taekwondo, where you're kicking with the foot, a lot of uh, muay thai kicks is actually striking with the shin. So, yeah. uh, and checking kicks low kicks with your shin so yeah you've definitely got to do a lot of conditioning yeah I, I can my, i can my thai instructor thank you you <laughs> <laughs> my thai instructor was have us running down streets of uh brooklyn in nothing <laughs> in bare feet and nothing but tie shorts <laughs> and uh throwing punches as we run for miles and <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. fitness. That's fit. That's fitness on another level. <laughs> Talking about the yes. boxing, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of yep. people, there's people that are how do that don't know martial arts or haven't trained in martial arts before. We would really suggest that you find the yep. dojo, get involved. It's good for your overall health, your main, uh, mental state as well, and it really, um, yes. it really helps you to be empowered and to be safe because you do learn. Uh, ways yeah. to protect yourself and a lot of people that want to go into tournaments that want to go into professional fighting you know it's easy to watch it on the youtube channels easy to see it on fight night yep. and on the fight app yep. but there's a lot of technique that's involved uh you know you you no, absolutely make sure that your hands are always up you have to keep your chin down your footing has to be right uh, yes. What we do at the dojo is we actually put a tennis ball uh, here in our arm and then we yeah. teach the, from young, we teach them to, uh, you know, kind of keep the tennis ball there while they are doing the uppercut or while they are doing, because you yeah. have to have that control because you have the sides of your body also to protect in a fight. So technique is so important. Yeah. How how would you... um? Uh, uh, advise people out there that are training how to follow those techniques or what techniques work to teach them to do the boxing to go to the next level um to me it's all, all about repetition um mm -hmm. and l like you said you know on, on everybody that watches the ufc for example or watches uh boxing um to me you know i, I tell my fighters the the fight is the fun part Fight night's the fun part. You've trained, you've worked your butt off uh, for months leading up to that fight when you signed that um, that contract to take that fight. Yeah. Uh, but it's the three or four months leading up to that actual fight that is the tough part. Um, you know, but technique is is so important because you know uh, I I have my students drill uh, consistently. Um, you know, drilling, uh, even basic techniques, yes. you know, uh, a lot of people like the, the flashy stuff, but basic techniques is, is, yep. is what works, you know, uh, yep. Uh, Work you, hard basic, and fight easy. Uh, boxing content. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Train hard and fight easy. Yep. Exactly <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> so, um, to me repetition is is everything you know uh i i i became really well known for using my yokogeri or my sidekick yeah um and i incorporated that with my muay thai and it's not a really 
uh, widespread technique used a lot in Muay Thai. Um, but I would land it on my opponents, but I would uh, drill thousands and thousands and thousands of psychics. Yeah. Um, you know, every every, every week I, I would throw 10,000 psychics and, you know, um, so it, it definitely worked. It paid off in my fights. And, uh, when, you know, my, my heel was hitting my opponent's ribs and, uh, Ouch. you know, and, and I was able to set up punches with it after that. It was, you know, it was definitely something that I become well known for using. The Yoko Gary is very effective. Absolutely. I see more fighters using yeah. that often than the Mawashi Gary. Or the my Gary's yes. or the G Gary's. The Yoko Gary is very, very effective. Whenever I watch MMA with my son, because he also does, my children also do martial arts with me. We always watch the MMA and then I see them, you know, kneeing each other uh, and pushing yeah. their head down. And, and then we say, oh, he's a Gary, you know, because it's all really intertwined. Yep. All the styles have that point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> A little Absolutely, bit about yes. your acting career. You've been acting sure. as well. You are involved. I mean, I, I also want to talk about the military and the things that you've learned yep. there, but let's <laughs> go into your acting. Uh, what do you enjoy sure. about acting? Um, I, I actually got into acting by accident, so to speak. A oh. uh, good friend of mine. Yeah, a good friend of mine, Grandmaster Bob, uh, who teaches Kali. Um, I was training Kali with him. Um, a few years, a few years back, and he was teaching a fight choreography class, and he invited me to come to it. And I kept turning him down and saying, "You know, no, I'm a real fighter. I fight for real. You know, I don't do the acting thing." And he convinced me, and I end up enjoying it. And uh, and he said, well, "You're kind of a natural at this fight choreography stuff." So. Uh, and I said, well, yeah, because of I know how I react when I get hit for real. So, um, and he put me in touch with a producer on a project, a uh, good friend of mine, uh, Ronell. And um, oh, and she ended up, yeah, Ronell, yep. Yeah, and she ended up using me to choreograph a fight scene for a short film that she was doing. Oh, wow. And um, she liked my work and... Uh, she invited me to do the choreography for uh, a small TV show that she was doing, so and as well as play a part in the TV show. So, um, so I started enjoying the acting, and uh, I've done a few projects now, and uh, I really enjoy it. And Fantastic. I enjoy doing fight choreography. Yeah, I can just imagine that must be amazing because I mean you have the background. You know what will work and what won't work. Ronal is amazing. Yeah. Shout out to Ronal. She's also going to be on on here. I believe tomorrow is her session. Um, How awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about fight choreography. And uh, how long does yep. it take? You know, if you have a scene, how does it start? Do they, do they uh, give you the guidelines of what's supposed to be in that scene or do they give you the background of the scene? Or how do you go as the martial artist, as the fight choreographer, how do you put it together? Um, a lot of times um, I'll read the script and I'll see what it entails in the script of, uh, you know, the, the action in the scene. And mm -hmm. I'll um, uh, get the people involved in that fight scene. Um yeah quite a lot of the 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 uh fight choreography i've done i've actually done choreographed it the the day of so oh. uh you know the day of filming so um uh, yeah yeah because sometimes we're rushed on set and sometimes you know due to scheduling you know we can only do it on weekends or something like that um so i'll get the actors together involved depending on their skill level i work with some guys that have some training, have some fighting knowledge. Uh, I've done some martial arts, for example, and uh, so I can make their scene a little more intricate uh, and add a little, a little more spice to it. Whereas if I get actors or actresses that have never done any kind of fight scene in a, uh, in a movie or a TV show or anything like that, then I'll keep it very, very simple. Mm -hmm. And just to 
couple of moves, two or three moves. Um, and I try to make it realistic and trying to make it, you know, uh, that the, the crowd can actually, you know, the viewers can actually say, yeah, that looked, that looked like it would really hurt. That would look like it, it would really cause damage. Yeah. <laughs> And because you know uh, you are you've been in the, the the spaces sometimes we have big spaces to with these different variables uh, to take into calculation yes. what is the space am I going to do the jump yeah. is there enough space because where will my partner land and you know the camera angles and the, I find it very very interesting yeah. but having that background that you have I mean that is just yeah. something that you cannot replace it's just you have the background, you've been there, you've done it, you know yeah. what will work. So I'm looking forward to watching, uh, you know, some of the films that you've done and also the upcoming projects that oh, yeah. you're going to be working on. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I can imagine. I, I <laughs> once spoke with uh, yeah. Silvio. Silvio C. Mac was on and I asked him, you know, because he also does fight choreography and then he, you know, yeah. works with the actors and everything. And I asked him, is there a funny moment that you remember that you were on set? And I believe it was Jet Lee that did a pro project with him. I think it might have been in Unleashed. But he said that Jet Lee was supposed to uh, jump on his back or something and he was going to throw him over. And in the one take, Jet Li was running and jumping on his back and then he kissed him in the in the neck and he said, I would not get it. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, one of the first projects I did was with John Varnes and uh, I was yeah. trying to be all serious. It was a, it was a bar scene. <laughs> and uh, if, if you've ever met John, I know you have, but he's uh, quite a comedian. <laughs> and I was trying to play a serious character in this movie, and he would not stop with the jokes, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't stop laughing as I'm trying to, trying to act like I'm, I'm a, a you know, being serious. So <laughs> <laughs> it makes it fun. Yeah. It makes it fun. You know, it, it just lifts the spirit and the energy of the room, and uh, I, I appreciate yeah. these moments that we can just. You know, relax, and then before we continue on, of course, with what we are doing. But it's good to have those moments. And you mentioned yep. that you were in the British military and you were in the Marines. Tell us, what was that like? Yes. Was differences? Was the one uh, training uh, course maybe more difficult than the other, or were they the same? How does that work? Um. So I joined the British Army at sixteen. Um, so I was very young. Um, uh, before that I was in, uh, what we call in England, the army cadet force, uh, which I joined with that. I was in at 11. Um, it's almost like, uh, the junior ROTC here in schools. Um, but yeah, I joined the British army at 16 and I served three years before moving to, to the United States. And, um, uh, I was an infantryman and, um, so uh, when I moved out over here uh, and I started fighting uh, and bouncing and doing security work and things like that. Mm -hmm. And actually when I moved over here, uh, my parents, I, I moved over here from the army to be with my parents that had bought a home here and moved here. And a couple of years later they moved back and I actually lived in my dojo for two years oh, <laughs> once they happy. moved back. But yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. Like so that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was able to train uh, whenever I wanted, you know. So that that was a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I was out here a few years, and then I joined the Marine Corps Reserve, and mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, and um, the Marine Corps training was very very intense. Um, going to Paris Island um, for 13 weeks boot camp was definitely, definitely tough. But I'd already been through military training, so I had a, a bit of an edge uh, on the other recruits. Yeah. So I was able to be kind of that that leadership role to them when, when, you know, a couple of them wanted to drop out and go home. I was able to sit and talk to them and say, listen – it's designed to be tough. You know, they have to break you down so they can build us back up to be Marines. 
So um, it, it definitely helped having that background already of being in the British Army. But uh, it was a great time in my life. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. It's tough. I follow I follow some of the YouTubers and uh, there's this, I forget his name now, but he goes on all these courses. He goes and then he does the, uh, like the training with the Navy SEALs and he's done the Marine training and he's done... And then he sees yep. how his fitness measures up. It's tough. These courses, oh, yeah. very tough, yeah. these boot camps, it's very, very tough. And I mean, he only does it for yeah. that day. And he also says on his yeah. videos, he can't imagine doing it for all those weeks on end. That's that's very yeah. tough uh, training. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I think definitely the martial arts, my martial arts background that yeah. definitely helped me uh, get through that. I was already in good shape going to boot camp with the Marine Corps uh, because of my uh, previous, you know, all, all my training that I've done for mm -hmm. fighting. So uh, the martial arts definitely helped uh, being in good shape and being prepared for that. I can believe that, that muscle memory. And, uh, you know, after years of doing the martial arts, that stamina that's built up, it's all in your body. That's why we like to train yep. Mushin Jitsu, Mushin Kan. Empty mind karate yeah. because you mentioned the repetition, repetition, repetition. You get to yeah. a point where you don't even think about the move, you just go with the flow. Whatever needs to happen yeah. next, body reacts, which is a good thing when you do get into that fight or into that danger. And you know, you mentioned that you yeah. left in your dojo. My dojo is my second home. That's why that's why I said I wouldn't yeah. mind in my dojo. Then I'm right there where I need to train. So Absolutely yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, I spend many, many Christmas days training instead of uh, having fun. <laughs> well, it paid off. It paid off, Lee. Look where you are today. All those black belts yeah. that you have, all the Absolutely. people you are empowering. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. Yes, yes. I definitely love teaching. I definitely love coaching and uh, and working with young people. Um you know, my current day job as a school resource officer uh, or school guardian, um, you know, I love definitely working with young people uh, and helping them to be better. Beautiful, beautiful. Tell us, Ali, um, you know, we've covered your history, the things that you're busy with. Tell us about yeah. some of the lessons that you've learned. Whether you want to share something that you learned in the military or maybe in the martial arts, What's something that is, you know, sometimes you go through life and every few years something just becomes a knowing and then you later in your life you think back on that moment again that really made that impact on you. What is a lesson or lessons that you've gone through uh, any of these areas that have really stuck with you? Um, definitely to... Uh, uh... I would say that working with people, um, not everybody's the same. Yeah. Um, people come from different walks of life, different backgrounds. Um, so uh, to be more understanding of people, um, I've, I've definitely learned that both through martial arts and the military and everything that, um, you know, just because you may not agree with what somebody believes in doesn't yeah. make doesn't make them wrong you know yeah. um so yep so the, the martial arts has definitely taught me that uh not everybody learns at the same speed as well being mm -hmm. a sensei being an instructor to my students and mm -hmm. i try and teach this to my black belts that uh, you've got to be patient uh with with teaching kids um because yeah. you get those kids that definitely can get it like that and and, and you get uh other kids where um and and i think i i think i always when i first started karate i was the worst student to teach i i was horrible i would walk into my dojo and my instructor would be pulling his out his hair going oh no he came back what do i have to do to get this kid to quit <laughs> i it was it was like I had two right hands and two left feet. I, I, I couldn't get anything right. And um and I definitely use that teaching kids now that struggle. Yeah. Um and I'm able to build their confidence because I tell them that 
listen, you're already better than I was when I was your age. Yeah. So stick with it, you know, keep on going, don't quit. Um, yeah. You're already ahead of the game. You're already ahead of me. So um, it's definitely helped me to be patient with, with teaching people of various skill levels or various, uh, um, you know, learning ability. That's true. That's true because everything that we do, uh, especially referring to Sharon Rush, Sharon Khan, everything that we do on the left, we do on the right. And karate yes. is a wonderful tool to, tra to train both sides of your brain. So I think for all of yes. us, when we start, Lee, it feels like we all have two right feet and two left hands. I mean, it's a whole <laughs> new world, but you lasted. You didn't give up. You yeah. just kept going back. And here you yeah, are that's, that's, teaching others. Yes, that's one thing that uh, I've never known the word quit. So okay. I, I've never had quit in me. So um, uh, as bad as I was, I, and I didn't even realize at the time that I was that bad. <laughs> you know? So um, I was never naturally gifted. It just through sheer hard work and never given up. Um, I was able to go on and accomplish uh, a lot of things in the martial arts. And the martial arts definitely led me to a lot of things uh, like the acting uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, my current position, you know, as a, a school guardian. So, you know, it, it's definitely helped in so many areas of my life. Uh, and you make a good point. I've seen over the years, uh, these, these, these kids that are just talented, they just, like you mentioned, they just get it and there they go. They've got yep. it. And then yep. there's other kids that take a little bit longer to learn, but I've seen many, many times, more times than I can even count, that hard works, hard work beats talent any day. I have seen it. Absolutely. Sometimes there are children that think, no, they have the talent, they don't have to go to class, they don't have to care. And that one yeah. kid or those two kids that just keep coming back and work at it. When we go to the tournament or when we yeah. do our uh, freestyle tournaments, you know, I see them beat the, yeah. the talent because they worked at it. They didn't stop. So there's a lesson. They, they worked at it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. I've had, I've had students that uh, were super talented, um, would do everything really, really well, and then quit. Um, and then I've had students that really, really struggled, but, uh, like myself, they yeah. never knew the word quit in them. Um, and my, my black belt test is a very, very tough three days. It's three, eight hour days. And it's oh, three of the toughest days, unless some of these kids join the military or something like that, that, um, you know, that they, they'll ever go through. Um, but to me, it's a test of. Uh, are they able to, are they mentally tough enough uh, to become a black belt? Are they men men mentally tough enough to push through uh, the tiredness, the, the the pain, the exhaustion, uh, yeah. to take their martial arts training to that next step? So, yeah, um, you know, and, and I've had some of my most talented students quit before that black belt test and oh, refuse yeah. to take that black belt test. Yeah. Um, and I know full well they would make it through it, yes. but they, uh, you know, just didn't have the heart to do it. Whereas mm. some of my not as talented people have pushed through it and uh, gone on to become very, very good black belts. Yeah. It's all about, you know, I always, I always listen. And, I, you know, when we go to the tournaments, when I don't compete, I'm one of the officials and, I watch, I, I love to watch and take in what's happening in real time. And I mean, what is the difference really between a gold medalist and a silver medalist? They train just as hard. They have the yeah. same skills. It's all about that mental yeah. strength. It comes down to that mental. Yes. Always. They have the same physique. They've Always, got yep. training. They can do everything that the other person can do. But it's always about that little yeah. push, that last push, that last punch, that last bit of good footwork or pressing through. And the one wins and the yeah. other one wins the silver medal. It's all about what we think. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs>
It's been so lovely to spend time with you, Lee. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes, you too. time. Do you have any last no, words? No wisdom? problem. Thank you so much. Do you have any last um, words of wisdom? Um, just keep on pushing through no matter what life throws at you, no matter how tough things get, keep on pushing through and never quit. That's it. Hashtag never quit, guys. You've learned, you've heard Lee now. Uh, let's listen to his words of wisdom. He's been there. He's been helping so many people over the years. Thank you, Lee. We appreciate you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Us. Thank you. You too, us. And thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Have a beautiful day. We'll speak soon. Bye-bye. You too. Take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye now.